This video presents the techniques being used to create a high-fidelity digital 3D model of the Viking 75 Mars lander. This ongoing project is intended to document and preserve the groundbreaking effort of the Viking project team. Viking was the United States' first project to land an unmanned spacecraft on Mars. Two Viking missions were launched in 1975. Both spacecraft reached Mars in 1976 and landed safely. Viking 1 operated for six years, while Viking 2 operated for four years. The 3D modeling software I am using for this project is SketchUp, chosen because it is relatively easy to use for creating precise and complex 3D geometry, and because a no-cost version is available. I have made the work-in-progress model file freely available as well, so that anyone with a mid-range computer can work with the model themselves for no additional expense. Creating an accurate digital model requires a detailed understanding of the physical hardware. Both Viking Landers 1 and 2 are essentially identical and serve as the ultimate reference material. However, they remain on Mars and out of reach for detailed study. Four test units and one backup flight spare unit built during the project are preserved here on Earth. These are substantially the same as Viking Lander 1 and 2. All seven lander units were built by Martin Marietta, now part of Lockheed Martin, from 1972 through 1975. The differing levels of completion between these units reveal various aspects of the hardware design and assembly. The proof test capsule seen here is a nearly complete fully working lander. It provides valuable, unique reference material, but the nearly complete buildup causes certain components to be obscured. The other test lander units have a mix of authentic and mock-up components, and some lack a few items. The mock-ups are generally not useful as reference material due to their simplified design. Missing items, on the other hand, often allow visibility to otherwise hidden parts which can be helpful for research. The backup flight capsule 3 unit seen here has almost none of the lander's many external components. This makes it appear perhaps unfamiliar as a Viking lander, but nicely exposes all the fittings, brackets, struts, and shims to view. This project's goal is to create a highly accurate and complete digital 3D model, including essentially all external and some internal piece parts of lander hardware. This requires extensive reference material. My primary reference foundation is a set of lander assembly blueprints from Martin Marietta. These provide hundreds of precise dimensions, shape references, and fastener identifications. I have collected hundreds of Viking project engineering drawings and historic photographs from original documents and from archived online sources. With the generous assistance of numerous organizations, I have been allowed to capture over 1,000 measurements of actual lander hardware. Here are some data recording sheets I used when measuring the S-band high-gain antenna in the collection of the Viking Mars Missions Education and Preservation Project. Planning for a research visit includes preparing a set of such photo illustrations, deciding in advance what dimensions would be most useful. The goal is to make efficient use of time on site and minimize the chance of omitting an important measurement. During pre-planning, I draw empty red circles connected to leader lines for features to be measured, such as lengths or angles. Here are some of the tools for capturing measurements. The most commonly used tools are dial and electronic linear calipers. These capture measurements such as widths, spacings, thicknesses, and depths. The smaller caliper can often fit within an obstructed area that would block the larger caliper. This electronic outside caliper can reach around items too deep for the jaws of the linear calipers. Various tools are used to measure angles. This angle finder will work in any orientation so long as there is clearance for the arms. Where clearance is tight or the target angle cannot be enclosed on both sides, this gravity sensitive angle gauge is very handy so long as the surface being checked and the reference surface are not tilted sideways very much. Outside calipers help to measure irregular or bulky objects. The jaws of the caliper are set to match the target dimension. Then another tool, such as a linear caliper, is used to carefully measure the distance between jaw tips. Inside calipers can similarly be used to measure interior gaps or spacings. 
Much of the Viking Lander hardware's geometry consists of straight lines or circles which are usually simple to measure. However, there are some irregular shapes and shapes without clear reference points. Tracings can be made to capture an actual size outline, such as the cover of the solenoid that opens the lid of the surface sampler collector head and this fuel tank support strut. A multi-finger contour gauge can be used to record a profile, such as the simple curve at the bottom of a footpad or cross-sections of a camera's fixed post. Every aspect of a component must ultimately be defined in a deliberate numeric manner. Fastener hole diameter and spacing, fillet radius, material thickness, etc. Even with a large and growing collection of published dimensions and directly captured measurements, many details of a component's geometry must be carefully estimated from drawings or photographs. As an example, here is how to estimate the spacing of the wire bristle bundles on the lander's magnet cleaning brush. Begin with photographs of the component and identify a feature with a known dimension. A unique image scale can be calculated for that feature in a given photograph to convert from Photoshop image units to true inches. Use the Photoshop ruler to measure the known feature, in this case 3.855 units. Divide the known dimension 1.77 inches by 3.855 Photoshop units to compute the scale factor 0.459. The photograph is annotated with the scale factor for future reference. Reference lines are drawn over the photograph for new dimensions to be estimated. The Photoshop ruler can now be used to measure a new feature such as the vertical distance between rows of bristles, 0.576 Photoshop units. Multiply the 0.576 units by the scale factor 0.459 to yield the estimate of 0.26 true inches. With high-resolution photographs free of significant distortions in at least one dimension of interest, such virtual measurements can be estimated to much better than 1% verified by comparing known to estimated cases. I have visited each of the five earthbound lander units as well as studied some separate components and taken over 3,500 detailed photographs. The component I am currently creating for the model is part of the surface sampler collector head. Seen here is a spare collector head and shroud unit, the hollow cylinder on the right. The shroud was sealed around the collector head and pressurized prior to launch from Earth to preserve the ultra-cleaned and sterilized state of the unit. As seen here, the shroud is loosely fitted over the collector head. After landing on Mars, the shroud was ejected via eight stiff springs. The collector head was attached to the sampler boom or arm by a thick black collar, the object to be modeled. Electric power and signal lines for the collector head were routed through a socket at the center of the collar via a flat conductor cable in the hollow boom. The 3D object creation began by placing an oversized working surface on the rear face of the shroud model completed previously. The curvy outline of the collar was laid out via guidelines and circles. The now unneeded guides and excess arcs were deleted and the remaining arcs joined to form the basic outline. The surrounding 2D surface was removed and the collar outline was extruded to give it thickness matching the collar back plate. Additional depth was added to the front of the collar, including a large groove for the gasket that seals the shroud to the collector head. A large circle was drawn on the back of the collar and pushed inward to create the rear hollow. Four small holes were formed for the boom attachment fasteners. Notches were cut in the two large peripheral tabs forming the area where the shroud's two latches hook onto the collector head. The electrical connector socket and a few other details have not yet been formed. Here is the current state of the Viking Lander digital model. The core body consists of three large one-piece side beams a bottom cover with large central vent, and a top cover with three sub-panels enclose the structure. Hundreds of external fittings are attached to the body and to each other. The three landing leg models include their internal deployment and latching mechanisms. Much work remains to be done to model the numerous external lander components. Three terminal descent engines will be mounted underneath this and two similar fittings. The surface sampler assembly will be mounted on top of this fitting. The sampler arm's pre-landing restraint pin engages this post. 
the S-band low gain antenna will be mounted on this small arm. The UHF antenna will be mounted on this shelf. The S-band high gain antenna will be mounted here. Two small pins ensure accurate pointing alignment. The radar altimeter antenna will be mounted below this fitting. The meteorology boom assembly will be mounted here. The hinged boom is folded in half until shortly after landing. The boom's downlock device will be on this small platform. The lander's two cameras will be mounted within the two openings surrounded by dust blocking tabs. 3D printing technology allows the digital model to be returned to the physical realm. This is a guide roller assembly which interface between the lander and its base cover, the top shell of the aerodynamic capsule in which the lander was enclosed until shortly before landing on Mars. This is actual hardware on the Flight Capsule 3 backup lander. And here is a 3D print directly from the digital model printed by iDot Materialize as separate pieces in high detail resin for the body and prime gray for the axles and wheels. The faceting in the wheel faces reflects how the digital model was designed for simplicity to keep the overall model manageable in a computer's memory. I am grateful to the following organizations for allowing me to do research on the Viking artifacts they have preserved.